Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2019 release, Three from Hell. Yes, the Rob Zombie film. Now, first of all, I want to say I'm sorry. I'm going to do the best I can with this, but I'm physically not feeling well. I'm, I've been fighting something for the past few days. So um, I got to get this review out because it is showing up. This film is going up on Shudder as a Shudder exclusive on Thursday, February 13th. So when I'm dropping this, it's in two days. Uh, and I promised Shudder I would get it up, so thank you very much, Shudder, for the screener. But everyone, please excuse <clears throat> excuse me how my voice sounds if I have to cough during this or clear my nose or whatever. Uh, and the fact that like my eyes are glassy and puffy and, yeah, just been fighting some stuff. But I'll do the best I can for you guys. So, obviously, this is written and directed by Rob Zombie. Uh, I believe that Rob Zombie only writes his the stuff that he directs um i was thinking about this before i started recording and i was like i can't think of anything that he's directed that he hasn't written it seems like he just likes to have kind of full control over his material which you know can't blame him there's some great directors who do that like chamwick park uh, phenomenal one of my favorites uh so rob zombie's done such films as 31 lords of salem the halloween films one and two his remakes House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects, which obviously House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects were the first two films in this trilogy, and Three from Hell is the third film. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll, I'll, well, I'll get into that a little bit later. I was going to say something else. Uh, it had $3 million budget, and it actually ended up making $10.2 million in the box office, which that's a pretty good return. Uh, it originally was going to have a two-night theater release through Fathom Events, and then it did well on those first two nights, so they added a third night to the, for the showings. So I guess it overperformed for what they were expecting, which doesn't really surprise me that much because there are a lot of kind of, I don't know if it's quite rabid Rob Zombie fans, but there are a lot of strong Rob Zombie fans out there. Um, he's a very polarizing director. It's You have a lot of people who either hate him or they love him. I'm actually kind of in the middle where, like, I like some of his stuff, but I don't like a lot of his other stuff. So, like, for example, um, like, I hated 31. I thought that was terrible. I really hated his Halloween movies. Um, I really didn't like House of a Thousand Corpses until the very, like, last 15 minutes, which I thought were really good. But the rest of it I didn't like. Devil's Rejects I thought was really good. Definitely his best film. So I was hoping that he would be able to kind of stick with that for Three from Hell. And Lords of Salem, actually, I heard a lot of crap about Lords of Salem, but I actually liked it. Maybe part of the reason was that D. Wallace was in it. And D. Wallace shows up in Three from Hell, too, so that's a nice surprise. That's, that's one of the other things with this film, is that there are these cameos. I already, you know, kind of said D. Wallace is in it, but um, there are some other cameos. I'm not going to say who else shows up, but just watch the film and you'll see. You'll be surprised and have fun with it. Um, I, th just so you know, this is a no spoilers review since it's about to go up on Shutter as an exclusive. So you can safely go ahead if you're not, or if you, if you haven't seen the film yet and you will after this video, it'll be safe. You know, I'm not going to ruin anything. So the post-production of this film actually ended up being delayed by five months so that Rob Zombie could do his musical tour with Marilyn Manson, which is kind of a weird thing. Because you would think that you would just like want to get it done, but um, you know, I mean, the music industry. I guess you got to tour when you got to tour, especially if you want to make money. Uh, Sid Haig was actually originally supposed to have a bigger role in this film, but he actually couldn't commit to having a much bigger role because of his health issues. So the original script had him in a much larger capacity. Uh, it was rewritten then to include Richard Brake, his character, which is like the Midnight Wolf Man, I think is what, it, what he calls himself in the film, um, which going into it and knowing that information, I was kind of like, ah, it's, I feel like it's going to feel like he's like kind of shoehorned in there, which in a way it does a little bit like the introduction of him seems like he's shoehorned in. But after that, I feel like he feels good in the film. Like, his character feels good in the film. Richard Brake, in particular, he did a great job in this. He was one of my favorite parts of the film, to be honest. And especially the interplay between um, Bill Mosley and Richard Brake. The way those two interacted. So the Midnight Wolfman and um, Otis. Just, their interactions were great. And I wanted more of that. That's what I really liked about it. 
Uh, Sid actually passed away shortly after the release of this film. You do see him in this a little bit, but I mean, you know, you're not going to see much of him just because, you know, he passed and he wasn't doing well and it sucks because by all accounts, he was an amazing individual, a very, very nice person and I've never heard anything bad about him. And I talk to people who go to conventions all the time. And he was very active at conventions. And everyone who met him said he was an awesome, awesome person. So really sucks to, you know, lose someone like that. Um, so the opening music for this is actually very over the top, in my opinion. And they do kind of a really horrible looking slow motion grainy panning shot. That, like, I get it. Like, I understand the aesthetic that he's going for, especially in the beginning of it. And the aesthetic of, of it actually changes. Like, the way the film itself looks. It's very, like, gritty and grainy and, like, 70s in the beginning. And then it gets updated and it's actually, like, HD after eh, maybe the first, like, five minutes-ish. And, like, I get why that is. And, and you'll understand as well. But, but, like, the way they did the initial shot of that, like, slow motion panning, it looks terrible. Like, you can't see much. It just looks like garbage. And they should have they should have used a different shot. Zombies should have used something else instead as his opening shot. It just looks bad. Uh, the explanation of the ending of D Devil's Rejects and how we get to Three from Hell is very poor. It's very poor, it's very contrived, it's very stupid, in my opinion. But some people may feel differently. But, in all fairness, you do just kind of get past that, to be honest. Like, I didn't get too hung up on that. I was like, okay, premise accepted, let's move forward. And that's okay. You know, with, with some of these films, you just kind of have to suspend belief just to get through the film and enjoy the ride. Uh, the super 70s feel of this film, with it being, like, gritty and dirty, it looks good. It's really nice. Uh, but then again, you know, like, that's that's Rob Zombie's aesthetic. That's what he really likes to do. I know he's very heavily inspired by, like, Toby Hooper, obviously of Texas Chainsaw Massacre fame, but also did Poltergeist, which a lot of people don't know. It sucks. Hooper got screwed a lot in in the industry, and that's just, that's sad. But anyway, that's a whole nother thing. Uh, but yeah, so he, he pulls a lot from Toby Hooper's aesthetic in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and you can see that in this film. Uh, there's a heavy comparison to the Manson family in this, and while I was watching it, like, that occurred to me, and then I was like, what, is it like that in Devil's Rejects and House of a Thousand Corpses? Um, I did a review of Devil's Rejects, and it wasn't that long ago, but I can't remember that kind of relationship and how they portrayed it. Um, I don't remember it being very Manson family-like in Devil's Rejects, and House of a Thousand Corpses has been a long time since I've watched that, so I definitely can't remember that one. But that does bring up that if you want to see my review for Devil's Rejects, it is on my channel, so check that out. Uh, I'll do, I should do House of a Thousand Corpses at some point, too. Uh, it was good to see Sid, Sid Haig, and he, did, he actually did a really good job, to be honest. The portion he's in, which, like I said, it's not a lot, I thought he did an exceptional job especially for, like, knowing how bad his health was at that point. Um, he really, he brought it. Like, he did the best he could. He came to work, and he gave it his all. And that was just nice to see. It's like a went-out-on-top type moment, and, and that was kind of heartwarming. Uh, the introduction of Richard Brake's character is, it's solid in a way, but they make him, they make him related to the family. Like, that's not... It's not really a spoiler. I mean, I guess minorly it is. It doesn't have much of to anything. It doesn't have much of anything to do with the actual story of it. It's just like this is how we um, justify bringing this character in. Um, it's just too convenient. It feels way, way, way too convenient, uh, and it's it and contrived and dumb in my opinion that they introduce him as like a cousin. But it's I don't know. Like the the way that he 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 meets up with Otis is fine, and that works just fine, but the fact that they made him a cousin is just, that's the dumb thing, like, just drop that, and it's all good, like, I'm, I'm totally fine, like, he could just be the, the, this other dude who's a psycho as well, and wants to join in the fun, like, that's fine, that would really work, and like I said, like, Richard Brake did a really good job, and I really liked this, and I liked him in the film, and I'm surprised and happy that his character didn't feel blah, since he was kind of like a last-minute change. Um, so the first 
<laughs> the first time Sherry Moon Zombie spoke in this film, I rolled my eyes so hard. Um, I don't like her at all. I think she's a terrible actress, uh, especially with this role of Baby Firefly. I think she's always played that role so over the top and so ridiculous and so annoying that I cannot stand it. I cannot stand her. And the problem is that's kind of how the character was set up in House of a Thousand Corpses. And then it gets carried over to Devil's Rejects. And it's even worse in Three from Hell. I feel like she is at her most annoying and awful in Three from Hell. Sorry. You do get a little bit used to it, though, as it goes on, but it's just like her character doesn't make a whole lot of sense because she'll like she oscillates between being totally unhinged for a very significant amount of time and then being more serious and much less unhinged. And it's just this, I mean, you could see it as being kind of, you know, split personality or whatever, but or like the switch goes on for psycho mode versus, you know, more docile, but I, I don't know. Her her character just has too many weird swings. And she she distracts with the film, she distracts the film and the audience with just really dumb things that have nothing to do with the story. Terrible. I just I can't I can't stand Sherry Moon Zombie. The other thing is I hate 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 nepotism in film. That's one of the worst things, in my opinion. So when uh, directors in particular are putting their wives in roles, not because they deserve them, but just because that's their wife, I hate it. And that's clearly what's happened with uh, Rob Zombie. He puts his wife in things just because it's his wife. She's not suited for the roles. Uh, I do think that if these films would be... If you would substitute someone else for Baby Firefly... I would like these films a lot more, in my opinion. It's just she's, she is hard, hard to handle, hard to handle. Uh, it's nice to see Bill Bill Mosley enjoy a role for a change, at least lately. Uh, the last time I saw him, he was in the film Bore, also on Shutter, and he did not look like he was having fun, and he totally phoned that one in. So the last time I had seen him prior to this film, I was like, wow. He is not really feeling it. Um, I wonder what's going on. So then seeing him in Three from Hell, it's obvious. You can tell from his acting and the way he, he uh, brings energy to the character of Otis again that he's having fun, he was enjoying it, and he's not phoning it in at all. So that was really good to see. Rob Zombie writes some pretty cringy dialogue at times, like pretty cringy. Uh, the dialogue is, it, it's pretty up and down, to be honest. Like, some of it's really good, and then some of it's really terrible, and it's a real mix. It's kind of this roller coaster throughout the film of, like, oh, pretty good lines, and then, ooh, oh my gosh, what? Uh, sometimes it lands, and others it's like he's trying way too hard, and stuff doesn't even make sense. Like, he, he tries to make a lot of, um, have a lot of, like, uh, metaphors in, in, what, in what his characters say, or analogies, and it's just... A lot of them don't work. They just don't land. They don't even really make sense. So, I don't know. His writings were up and down. Zombie likes to put a lot of filler dialogue and filler character interactions in his films. Some play well, but most of them don't. Yeah, this is the whole thing where, like, the film is like... Wait, how long is it? I was going to talk about it later. So, the film's an hour and 55 minutes long. First of all, an hour and 55 minutes for a horror film... You've got to be really good in order for that to feel appropriate and in order for people to stay engaged with a film like that for, for that long, for an hour and 55 minutes. This film does not justify that runtime at all. And part of the problem why we get to the hour and 55 is what I was just talking about. Rob Zombie puts a lot of filler dialogue and a lot of filler character interactions in. It feels like he just kind of does whatever he wants, which, you know, he's the one writing it and directing it, so I guess... You know, that makes sense to a degree, but it's like he doesn't let anyone else see the script and like give him notes or, or edit it or anything like that, or, or he does and they, and he just says no to it because there are so many moments where you're like, why are we going on this like side tangent or like, why is this diatribe happening? It has nothing to do with the story or what's going on. And it's just. It's just ridiculous. And some of them are thrown in there just because they're intentionally weird and they just don't work. Some of them are thrown in there because they're supposed to be funny and they're just not funny. 
So it's like, it just seems like a lot of like Rob Zombie chuckling to himself with a lot of this stuff. And you're just like, okay, let's have a little self-control, kind of rein that stuff in here, buddy, because you're making this to be financially viable. I'm, I'm, I'm saying, just saying. Um, there's way too much time spent on Sherry Moon Zombie in this. Baby Firefly has way too much screen time in this. It's unwarranted, especially with what's going on in the story, in my opinion. And there is not enough of Otis and the Midnight Wolfman, Richard Brake and Bill Mosley, because, like I said, those two play off each other so well in this film. Honestly, if they would have just deleted uh, Baby Firefly from the film, if they would have just killed her off immediately, and it was just Bill Mosley and Richard Brake, it would have been a lot better, in my opinion. Like, a lot better. And then you could have shaved the runtime down significantly as well. So, just saying. Uh, there's some good small roles because of who the actors are in this. And this kind of gets back to, you know, some of the kind of cameo-ish performances that show up in this. So, I'm not going to say anything else. I know I already, already said D. Wallace. I got a little overzealous there. I, I love D. Wallace. But um, she has a larger role than most of the cameo-ish roles. So... Rob Zombie sure loves using slow motion. <laughs> uh, and I put pro tip, don't use slow motion on a scene where you intend to use CG blood. He does that a few times in this. First of all, it does get annoying like how much slow motion Rob Zombie uses in this film. Um, some people may not you know, mind that. It's something that bothers me when you just keep using the same device over and over and over again. So like continual slow motion, I'm like, oh my gosh. This isn't the Matrix, dude. Uh, and then, specifically, like I said, when you're doing slow motion and you're using CG blood, mm -mm, that's a big no-no because that CG blood's going to look terrible. Using CG blood at all, it has to be used when it's a quick take. You're not going to be able to focus on it for very long and, and see what's really going on there. Uh, but, unfortunately, when you're doing a slow motion and you put CG blood in there, that's exactly what the audience is seeing. They are focusing for a while and they're seeing how fake and bad it looks so just saying uh and the ending's actually kind of whatever um it's a i didn't feel like the ending was like a good ending i didn't feel like it was particularly bad either it was just kind of like uh okay it ended you know and that's kind of the film in general it's just kind of it's just a continuation of mayhem in a sense and that's there's not much story to be honest, which is probably why there are all these, you know, all the filler dialogue and character interactions. There's not a lot to it. Uh, cinematography is actually good. You know, Rob Zombie can direct. This guy, he knows what he's doing. He's done a bunch of films. Uh, the music is good. Actually, the music choices in this are really good, um, which, you know, that shouldn't be a big surprise. Rob Zombie knows music. That's how he got started in, in industries. Um, and then he went to film. So it's not a big surprise that his musical use in this is really good. That's one of the things that really helps enhance the film, in my opinion. Uh, but, yeah, like I said, this film has no business being an hour and 55 minutes. It should definitely be cut down. Um, so the film's all about mayhem, like I was saying, which is actually par for the course with this subject matter and as a con continuation of a House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Reject, but with less actual story than the other two films. Yeah, so... House of a Thousand Corpses kind of sets stuff up, has, you know, some story to it. Devil's Rejects has also has story to it. I think it had a little bit less story, but it was still story there. And then this one feels like it's not adding anything new, really. It's just a continuation of mayhem, you know? And, it, and it's just focusing on this is what following these people around is like and the mayhem that, that involved. Like, they... There's a bit, a very little bit of a story that's kind of introduced, but it's like, I don't know, it's it, it feels forced, and it's very whatever, it doesn't feel like it matters, and it, you know, so it's just light on story. It's not really any por point where you feel like it's going anywhere interesting, to be honest, it's just a slow, meandering film. I mean, it really is. Uh, and then I just said, the last thing I said about this is, if you're a big fan of these films, you'll like this. You will like this if you're a big fan of House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects, because it gives you more of what you like. It gives you more of the Firefly family. There you go. 
It just doesn't, doesn't introduce anything new or there's no story or anything. If you're in the middle about that stuff, like me, or if you don't like Rob Zombie, you're not going to like this film, most likely. Now, I'm an in-the-middle person, like I said, and overall, I didn't hate this film, but I didn't particularly like it either. Either, So it's one of those things where I will not rewatch it, because it, for me personally, it does not warrant a rewatch. I have no interest in watching it past the first time, but I'm... I'm happy that I watched it once. Like, it was worth seeing one time for me, to be honest, which which is fine because, like I said, like, I'm very in the middle on Rob Zombie. So really where this film is going to shine is for people who are big Rob Zombie fans and people particularly who are big fans of this Firefly Family trilogy. So, you know, make up your own mind. Figure out if you want to watch this or not. But I'd say just give it a shot, you know. There are plenty of movies out there. You never know if you're really going to like them or not until you check them out. So, uh, yeah, so awesome. Thanks for checking this out. I'm going to give my star rating on it now. So with uh, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm actually going to give this a two-star rating, uh, which, I go to be honest, going into it, I thought I was going to end up going, like, lower because I heard a lot of bad things about this film from people who aren't big Rob Zombie fans and in, in-betweeners. And um, I heard some good things on the other hand, but I heard more bad than good. So I was really going in thinking, well, me being who I am and how I feel about Rob Zombie, I'm probably not going to like this, but it was fine. You know, obviously I laid out all the problems I feel like are there. It could, it could have been a much better film had some of those things been changed, but it is what it is. So anyway, thanks everyone for checking this out. Thanks again to Shudder for sending me a screener for this one. I really appreciate that. And check it out on February 13th, uh, Thursday, February 13th on Shudder. It's a Shudder exclusive. It will be streaming there. So uh, do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe if you like any of the videos I do. Also, go check out my review for Devil's Rejects. I think that was a good one that I did. Um, that is spoilers, too. Spoilers for that review. Um, give me a, th a thumbs up if you like this. If you have already subscribed, then just give me a thumbs up to let me know you're still watching these. Put some comments down here. Have you seen Three from Hell? What are your thoughts on it? And we'll get to talking. But thanks everyone for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.